to people like us to do our part. And I hope that each and every one of you are willing to do yours, whatever that is. We can either choose to move down the path we're going, or we can choose a better direction, a more freer, more prosperous, more opportunity-full direction for this country, a direction where we are more fiscally responsible, where we do not saddle our children with the unsustainable levels of debt that will ultimately lead to a lower living standard and a debasing of our currency, where you and I go to the grocery store to buy that loaf of bread and it costs you $4, whereas it used to cost you $2. Not because the cost of bread has gone up, but rather because the value of your dollar has gone down. These are the types of policies that we are currently seeing in place that will continue to slide down the path, if you will, of socialism. Socialism is only good until you run out of other people's money. And so, we're at a crossroads, as I said before. A crossroads of do we move this country down a better direction? where our children have better opportunities, where they can make a life for themselves, where we offer solutions to the challenges that this country faces, or do we continue to slide towards a reality that none of us want for our children? I prefer the former, and I hope that you do as well. I appreciate the opportunity to come talk with you about some of my thoughts on some of the issues we face, and I look forward to take some, taking some of your questions. Thanks for having me out today. I appreciate it. Someone told me that, uh, you know, Ryan, there was something controversial you did, so, yeah, you might have. Anybody have a controversial question for me? It's okay, I'll answer. When you started talking about the bailouts, I agree, it's debasing the currency, but it started with Bush, and it seems that a lot of Republicans have forgotten that's where it started with. I agree, I it's forgotten. gone way out of control. I, I haven't forgotten at all. Uh, that's part of the reason that we are where we're at right now. Absolutely, it started, I would, I would submit to you, it didn't just start with Bush. Actually, every year since 1969, with the exception of a few years in the late 1990s, and that's only because the Democrats couldn't spend the money fast enough. Uh, our United States Congress has spent more money than it's taken in. Mm -hmm. It has shown an inability to be fiscally responsible, and that's why I believe a balanced budget amendment is needed. Although it's very difficult to practically apply that, given the, the reality that in our federal government right now, uh, very few actual things are discretionary. In fact, only 33% of the federal budget is, is discretionary. The rest of it is you know, a lot of entitlement programs and uh, Medicaid, Medicare, uh, those things, and uh, we all know that those programs are long-term insolvent, and we got to get a handle on those, those as well. But to your point, both Republican and Democrat administrations have proven throughout time, both presidential and Congresses, an inability to be fiscally responsible. And uh, I think it's bad, and that's why I do support some sort of a balanced budget requirement that forces Congress's hand to balance the budget and stop the levels of irresponsible deficit spending that ultimately led to a now national debt that exceeds over $11 trillion. And so I agree with you. I, I didn't say it, but, but uh, uh, well, we'll take it. What other questions do we have? Sure. Uh, recently, Colin Powell has offered our party uh, quite a bit of advice on the need to move forward and change and kind of be this open arms party. Can you speak to your thoughts on, on that? You know, uh, it's interesting. I was on ABC News uh, out in Washington, D.C., I think it was, a couple weeks ago. And they asked me the same question, kind of. They said, Ryan, uh, are you a Rush Limbaugh Republican or a Golden Power Republican? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to answer that? Uh, <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about Captain Drake. <laughs> <No. laughs> uh, I, you know, I, what I said to him is that uh, I'm, not, I'm not too much for labels. I'm Ryan Frazier. I do what I believe to be right, guided by my principles. So that said, they later asked me, so is it a matter of the party getting back to principle, or is it a matter of the party being, quote unquote, more inclusive uh, of, of differing viewpoints? And, and the response I offered, and I would offer here today, is that I believe it is a combination of both. I do believe that principles matter. 
principles guide decisions. And we ought to be very principled in our decision making. That said, we also, I think, need to apply Reagan's 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule went such that, look, we agree 80% of the time, you're my friend. And at the end of the day, we got to win. I don't know about you guys, is anybody tired of losing? Uh, <laughs> I know I am. I'm ready to go win in 2010. And so in order to do that, we need to form effective coalitions that says, you know, we agree with each other more than we disagree. And while there may be an issue here or there that we disagree on, we have more in common. So let's go win. Let's come together. So to, to Colin Powell's point, uh, if you will, um, I, would, I guess I would say that we have to come together in order to win. The Democrats have found a way to do that. If you look at what their strategy, strategy has been over the past several election cycles, if they've managed to form alliances called the Colorado Democracy Alliance, in effect, what they've done is said, look, we're going to put aside some of our differences inter-party, and we're going to come together. Is it raining? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Everybody's looking back. That could be God telling me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it probably is. Um, but we, I think we have to look at ways in which we can unite uh, if we want to win in 2010. And again, that goes back to my point earlier. I still believe Colorado uh, is a center-right state. I don't believe Colorado's red. I don't believe it's blue. It's Colorado. And so that means we have to have a, uh, a party that realizes that there are going to be differences within the party, but that at the end of the day, we have more in common than we have apart. Let's come together and go win uh, in 2010. Do you have a question? Sure. I was just wondering what, at what point in time did you decide to run or you have said, what made you make that decision? What were your main, like, two points of why it is and what you want to go about changing? Well, certainly not because I need a job. Uh, and my second part is, what's the small business that you're a part of yeah. that you own? Or your two part question. Those are difficult questions to answer. I have to remember when I'm supposed to answer. I'll remind you. I'll remind you. Uh, when, did I, when did I seriously start thinking about it? Uh, I would say I, I really started looking at the race. I thought about it probably as early as August of last year. Um, it was one of those things where I said, you know, the trend, we were looking at the polls and, and how things were going. Uh, it looked like Obama was starting to pull ahead. And I'm like, you know, if he actually wins, there's a good chance he may appoint Kim Salazar to the Interior Secretary. This is my thought at the time. I didn't know it for sure. I said, if that were to happen, I'd really take a hard look at that seat. And uh, sure enough, in December, he appointed me. I, I, I thought it was a miracle, actually. I was, I was thinking, is this like a message or something? You know? <laughs> and I started looking at it really hard. I had a lot of conversations. And what ultimately led me to, to, to make the go at it, was that I think, as, as I said before, we're at a crossroads in the state and the country. And I believe very firmly that now is the time for uh, a new generation of leadership to step forward. Uh, as I said to, I think it was, I, I was speaking to Ed Rollins, or Ed Rollins uh, managed the re-election campaign for a Ronald Reagan. And uh, I had a chance to talk with him briefly about the race. And I said the same thing to him. I said, you know, in Colorado, uh, in many ways, our generals are no longer viable. In other words, a lot of the people who carried the water in the past for the Republican Party are not going to be able to carry the water in the future in order to regain the confidence of the people and ultimately reestablish our footing and at some point a majority uh, in this state and uh, in this country. And I said, you know, I think now it's time for a new generation to step forward. It's obvious to me that I'm a very untraditional candidate for this office. Not many citywide at large representatives of city councilmen run for the United States Senate. But these are rare times. As I like to joke, President uh, Barack Obama was elected president, USAP went undefeated, and the Arizona Cardinals made it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> so these are rare times. And so I believe that it's time for our new people to step forward and say that we have something to offer and that we have a better vision for this country and for Colorado. And so that's why I decided to step forward. So. Thank you for the question. And your last question was, uh, I have an IT information technology application software development company that I'm a partner in. 
Uh, we, we primarily target chambers of commerce. For instance, one of our largest clients is the International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, has been in 115 countries, has, has 174,000 members. We deliver software to their members. So that's, that's what we do. Yep. Uh, California recently passed a law that 